It's not very often that the three of us get to be fair weather fishermen. There was kind of a nasty storm this morning. We looked at the radar and we're like, ah, we're gonna wait a little bit because it's gonna clear up and get pretty nice. Summer time frame, we wanna fish when it's kind of nice when we don't have to go out during tournament days. I got two guys with me, Corey Sprengel, Jason Shakira. They've both been on the show before. We're on pool three on the Mississippi River. These guys have had great success in major tournaments out here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast cranks that aren't very typical for walleyes. Ooh, something that you bass bait. maybe bass bait, maybe maybe for walleyes. So follow us, and we're gonna show you the next bite. Just looking for the next bite, next bite, next bite, next bite. Just looking for the next bite. Pool 3 of the mighty Mississippi River is located near Hastings, Minnesota. Lock 3, located at the bottom of Pool 3, sees more than 11 million tons of commercial cargo annually, in addition to more than 20,000 recreational watercraft. It is easily one of the most frequented and popular pools on the river. Catching fish at cast and crank baits, you know, banging rocks, bang, bang, like that one, right on the face of the dam. As soon as I wasn't banging anymore, that fish just lit it Smoked up. Smoked it. Professional walleye anglers Chase Parsons, Corey Springle, and Jason Chakirik are targeting man-made structures known as wing dams. These underwater structures extend partway out into the river, forcing the current away from its banks. Summertime walleyes on the Mississippi River and are generally pretty easy to pattern. We're here in June right now, and wing dams are generally that standby through those summer months because a lot of times what you have happen is in the springtime you have higher water levels those fish are generally in the backwaters as the summer moves on the water recedes and these fish migrate back towards the main channel where the current is and that's where these wing dams are located is on the main channel and so what we have is basically a conveyor belt being the main channel and these wing dams directing flow back towards the main channel and what you have in front of that wing dam is a little slack water area just behind the wing dam is a little current break and that's where these walleyes rest when they're not feeding so when the walleyes come up to feed they either sit at the top of it or at the face of that wing dam because the river is going to bring the food to them. They don't have to move far, but also makes it very easy for the angler to choose which wing dams because it's a very small area generally. As you know, wing dams aren't more than 100 yards long most of the time, but there's a lot of times there's differences in these wing dams. There might be a blowout, there might be a tree in an area, just key little differences that are going to position those walleyes in different spots throughout those wing dams along the river. Yup, he goes. I'm going to come on your side, Corey. <laughs> Fish. Just tell me to get out of the way. It's out of the way. <laughs> he doesn't want to come up. That thing is. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fish, man. Wide head shakes. You got me nervous, shaker yeah, at. He's coming. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! That's, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I think he choked, choked out, out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Boy, that is a good one. What is that, 25 inch? Oh. 24, 25. <laughs> Look at the bait. That, that bait is gone. <laughs> it chokes it. Aren't these supposed to be bass baits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darn good on walleye. I think the walleyes like them. Man, that's a good fish. <laughs> that was crazy. Like it, it looked like you were on a rock. I think Sprengel and I both thought you were on a rock. Is it just snag? Ah, good fish. Solid. Nice job, buddy. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, accuracy matters. 
Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. While the appearance of a wing dam may change over time as different sediments begin to fill the cracks and crevices, eventually forming a larger underwater wall. Get my bait out of the net so I can cast and get another one. I'll get this one back. Kind of a cool color. The, the dredger. <laughs> they are of a singular use to walleyes to avoid expending energy. So anything that can be done to get lures down right in front of their noses coincides with their present mood for an easy meal. So we're out here on the Mississippi River and we're casting crankbaits to wing dams. And the whole thing about being successful casting to these dams is you want to get a crankbait that runs down the face of that wing dam as fast as possible. The bait that we've been having a lot of luck on this week is a new bass bait from Berkeley. It's actually called the Berkeley Dredger. This is a 10.5 model, which tells us it runs about 10 and a half feet deep on a normal cast. But the whole key to this bait, it has a metal disc in the bill, which allows that bill to, to nose down quicker and it dives into that strike zone faster. So. Uh, that allows this small bait to get really deep, really fast. That's the whole key, you know, to catching a fish, uh, especially walleye on the face of a wing dam. Uh, the other baits that we're using this week, it's called the Berkeley Diggers. And there's two models that we've been using. This is a Digger 6.5 and a Digger 8.5. Those numbers dictate how deep these lures actually run. So on shallower wing dams, you know, we're gonna pick up a shallower running bait like this. On a little bit medium depth wing dam, we're gonna pick up an 8.5. And then if those wing dams get really, really, really deep and want to get it down there, we throw the dredger 10.5. So give these baits a shot. They're not just for bass. They catch a lot of walleyes, too. Fish. Oh, that looks like a good one, man. It is. I mean, this fish <laughs> just choked it, too. I mean, feeling this bait is going to be choked. <laughs> I mean, he just throttled it. I think you jump and almost kicked Shaker at and I right over the boat. Here it comes. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. You need to bring that bad boy right up under the engine. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beast. <laughs> you got some shoulders. Where is that bait? That Gone. That <laughs> thing was not coming out. Oh my God, the dandy. Holy cow, man. Yeah, you would have had to work to lose this one. <laughs> Look at the gut on it's this like thing. It's like a tarpon comes <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one, man. It was crazy when that thing came up. It just, oh, it just wallowed when it hit the surface. I mean, it hit it so hard. I felt like the double tap like it was a pike. I mean, it just, I knew it was choked <laughs> when it hit it. Here, you caught it. You let it go. All right, thanks, Do you know buddy. how to hold one of those? I do. I mean, <laughs> That's a good fish, man. <laughs> Real-time fishing information from all the pros in one place at walleyechatter.com. You know, it's a really cool time in the history of walleye fishing right now because we have more data than ever to not only help us find fish, but to stay on those fish and also to help us control the boat and catch those fish. And because of all that data, what we're finding is a real trend into bigger and bigger screens on our, on our depth finders and our GPS units. Thus enter the 16-inch screen on the Lowrance HDS 16. Now, a lot of people would think, well, why do you need all that, that screen uh, reality? It's because there is so much data. You know, take a look at just this screen alone. We've got a, a GPS on here. We've got conventional sonar on here. We've got our down scan sonar. We've got our side scan sonar. Up on the top, we've got information about our XI-5 trolling motor. You can even put a bar out on the side with mercury vessel view data about the engine back there. So all kinds of data. In fact, they say that this 16-inch screen has basically got 
got the equivalent of four 7-inch screens right on one unit. Now to process all of that data, this 16-inch unit is actually called a carbon unit. It has a dual-core processor. Fancy term for it, it's got two computers in it, which allows it to update things a lot quicker. You're going to especially see that when it's updating that mapping when you're running across the lake. So you got all this information. When do we actually use this information and when is that bigger screen nicer? The first one, I'll go to a screen here that I actually use a lot of times when I'm running across the lake. You know, sometimes when you're running, it's a little bouncy and stuff, it's hard to pick out information on here. Everything's bigger on the 16-inch screen, including things like your, your overlay data. You know, many people don't realize, but you can put a lot of the data as individual boxes on here, and you can control the size of them. On a, on a smaller unit, a lot of times those, those numbers are real small. Here I can blow them up really big, so even as I'm running, at a glance I can see all the information. Speed over ground, uh, uh, bearing to waypoint, course over ground, uh, my, my distance to that waypoint. So a lot of information, again, just at a glance and real clear to me. The other place I use this information, or this big screen, is we're spending more and more time in the back of the boat. Not only in our traditional ways, like for trolling, you know, where we're sitting back there running boards or flatline trolling, but I also use it a lot when I'm fishing, like shiver minnows or jigging because of that XI-5. We put that down, it's in the wind, we come back here and we're casting with the wind back to the structure that we're actually fishing. And again, I just got a glance over my shoulder. I can see things like depth, water temperature. I can see how my trolling motor is doing up at the top. So tons of information to help me when I'm fishing. So data is really important. The more you can show and the better you can see it, the better you're gonna be at finding fish, staying on those fish, and catching more of them. This just happens to be another one of those fishing situations where an electric steer bow mount like this XI-5 with the anchor mode can make your life so much easier. We're fishing these wing dams and we're basically just casting crankbaits to the top of them. So it's really pretty simple for us to just use that anchor mode inside that XI-5 to stay on the spot. You're going to be able to see where these wing dams lay on a good chip, like a Navionics chip. You can also see obviously by looking at the current and seeing where that water is boiling over the top. We're actually Actually going to start either on the inside of that wing dam or all the way out near the end of it near the middle of the channel and anchor up the boat where we can easily reach the top of that wing dam where you're making good rock contact with these crankbaits and bringing those baits back to the boat almost sweeping those baits across the face but what we're doing then is using the jog feature we're basically just jogging all the way down the face of that wing dam finding the spots that are holding the fish and sitting in that anchor mode when we find those fish and catching two or three off of a very little spot. While anchor mode is making boat control an afterthought, knowing where to approach and set up to cast each new wing dam. Jason, I still got that line out back there. Can be vital to catching more fish from a single area. Snag. Oh, sure, you got, oh, what do you got? I got one. You gotta be kidding, you do have one. The water is rushing, tannic in color, and the walleyes are hugging bottom. The white crankbait seem to be the ticket. Yeah, it really doesn't matter where we go. Walleyes, white, white baits, let's be honest. I mean, Tomato it's just, color. yeah, color. yeah, absolutely. Good fish right there. Even if you did use my rod. But even so, being exact with the initial boat positioning is having some very big results. Jace, you're the net guy. Yep, I can get it. Get the net. You got time, you got time. Hey, old. Don't oh, mess it up. Ah, he's way it's back. It's swimming, it's swimming down. Well, actually, it looks like I should he's be like, He's coming under the boat. Here. here he comes. Oh, don't let him work you under the boat. Guys, he's got you under the boat now. This is going to be a terrible net angle that it, you're going to make me take here. Oh, boy. Here, here it is. <laughs> oh. oh, there he goes. <laughs> and he's off. <laughs> that thing is a oh, Holy <laughs> cow. Look at that fish, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that, uh, I would say that he stopped the rod a little bit. <laughs> I mean, that fish wow. absolutely knocked slack in the line when it hit it. I mean, it was right on top of the dam. It, I mean, I knew it from the start. It was I'll give you one. a break. You let him take you <laughs> under the boat. Hate netting them like that. We all hate netting them like that when they come up. Right? <laughs> but just a chunk though. Oh. Easy. But I mean, there's nothing better than when they hit this summertime crankbaiting. That's <laughs> crazy how fun it is. Uh, get that one back. Get back. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, one of these years we'll catch that same one in a tournament. 
No matter which part of the Mississippi River you may be fishing, wing dams are very common, like we're fishing today. The first thing I like to do when I come up to a new wing dam is, you know, we generally have an idea what we have on our GPS, on our Navionics chip, on where that wing dam may be. And what I like to do is, you know, idle up or downstream, right off, you know, the, the center of the main channel here. And I want to look for that very end of it. It's a great starting location, and it's also a great spot for those fish to hide in the, in the, in the fastest current, you know, where these fish want to be set up at. So what we have here coming up on side imaging, as we can see, we have a, a difference in the bottom here. It's relatively smooth. We have a lot of rock here. Now, I almost drove just right over the edge of it here. So all I simply do with these touchscreen units is tap there. I like to utilize the rock waypoint to utilize where the exact tip of that wing dam is and put a waypoint down there. That gives me a great starting location when I turn around to say put the bow mount in the, in the water. I know exactly where to start, either on the inside or outside and work my way in. Another thing I like to utilize it for is uh, finding differences. You know, a lot of wing dams can be very small, but there might be one piece of brush or a tree down there, or a lot of times there's blowouts in these wing dams where the rocks end and there's just a sand trench through that wing dam. Those are those key areas you really want to key in on because there can be a lot of fish holding on a very small spot. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. Remote control kicker. <laughs> wow, how cool is that? The centerpiece is Mercury's Pro Kicker. To me, uh, there's nothing that com compares. It's got a strapping system, so when you trim it up and run rough water, that motor stays real steady. You don't put any pressure on the brackets. There's no cracking of motor brackets, and the hydraulics on the motor are just fantastic, and the motor runs like a top. The one thing that you can do, though, is surround this motor with accessories, and this uh, little hydraulic pump on the back is a Python steering system from Powertran. That's what I can turn with the remote control here. So instead of actually having to be by the motor, I can be any place in the boat and steer remotely. And then they have a nice system where they worked out the system with iTroll. iTroll actually digitally controls the, the speed. So all I gotta do is turn a dial and I can manipulate that speed up and down and precisely too. I mean, I can dial in the exact tenth of a mile an hour to, to troll with. If I want to troll super slow for spinners, I can do that. If I want to go to crankbait speed, I've got the ultimate in throttle control. And there are times though, that I still like to use the, the tiller. On my tournament boat, I run a tiller kicker, not one tied in like this with a second set of throttles like you see here. I actually use the tiller because if we're trolling deep water with lead core on a sheer cliff, I want to have that immediate swing where I can anticipate by watching my graph when to turn the motor. So the nice thing about this whole system and why I think it's the perfect system is there's a quick disconnect bar in the back where you can disconnect the python away from the steering and then basically it goes quick and you're free to go. You can run it with your tiller. So it's, to me, the best of all worlds. So you've got, in the centerpiece of the system, the Mercury motor, you've got Python steering, and you've got iTroll throttle control. You've got the ultimate of, of all systems for your, your kicker control. Professional tournament anglers Chase Parsons, Corey Springle, and Jason Shakirat are all very good at what they do, and each in his own way. Swimming across current, and then he... <laughs> another 17, 18 inch, but... Nice healthy fish though. So anytime you can get three competitors to align on an approach to a technique, you know you've got a solid method for catching Mississippi River walleyes. Kind of got a little Look heart then. No back He's fin. got no back fins. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen such a thing? No, I've never seen nothing. <laughs> well, you sure catch the ones with a lot of character, right. don't you, Shaker? <laughs> at? <laughs> the only question left is have these Berkeley bass baits found themselves a home in their tournament tackle boxes? One thing is for certain, 
Getting down fast and deep is key to catching these late spring wing dam walleyes. Oh my God. <laughs> is that a fish? This one's not moving. Get the, <laughs> yeah. I'm coming over. All right. I don't know if he's on the top of the dam that there's so much current, but I can't even. I'm gonna come over the other side. Yep. <laughs> Clear that what, rod. Do you, what do you got going on here, Jason? I'm not kidding. This one's I, good. I like it. I mean, this rod is double. <laughs> Unless he's hooked funny, it's a good one. Come on, Jason. Oh, oh yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a, not a, happy. I'll get him up. Yep. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be on top of the wig dam for a little well, bit, huh? Like I'm sitting like that, I'm like, I can't even move him, you know. He's right on top of that strong current. Oh, oh man. <laughs> that was crazy. Look at that on. fish. <laughs> oh, God. One, two, three. Perfect. God. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That Told right there, you. that's where you come to the Mississippi I for right it. there. <laughs> How can you be casting crankbaits for oh, walleyes man. like that? I mean, throw it on the wing dam, barrel it down the face. And... Well, I, I got to admit, I had fun and I wasn't even reeling that one just because it had to be sitting on top of the wing right. dam where that current was no, just, yeah, just blowing across because you couldn't even move it. No. I pulled Look the drag at that fish. Awesome. Healthy, long. Man, that's a good wallet. <laughs> Let's get her back, man. Yeah. Mississippi beauty right there. Doing good, Jake? Dean, I go 15. Oh, I just got a cramp in my little toe. <laughs> so, the inside of it, you know, if uh, I'm getting too long. Most of us that want to eat, you know, the <clears throat> pretty, you know, stand. <clears throat> Play the wind. <laughs> yes. Hey. Let her grip the buck. Yards. But I'm not saying. I'm not saying, Chase. I don't get it. You gotta start with like a spinner bait or something heavy. Oh, oh, oh. Did he? Won't hit the power pole. Shaved today? No. Yesterday? No. Last week? <laughs>